Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 15 of my favorite 30 progressive rock albums of the 70s countdown. We've been doing this all month long. We're right about the halfway point of the month. 30 days in June 2023, my 30 favorite prog rock albums of all time. I am limiting myself to only uh, a maximum of three albums from any one band. Because like I said, almost every day here this month... I could easily just take five, six bands and the entire 30 would be filled up by albums from them because you had, you know, a good number of bands who released four, five, six great albums in the 70s, the way it goes, but there was tons of other good ones. So obviously not every album that I love from the 70s from these prog classics will make the cut. It's just the way it is. But today, this is a band that straddles that line between what is considered progressive rock, <clears throat> what is considered hard rock, progressive metal, right? They showed up on last month, my favorite hard rock and metal albums of the 80s. <clears throat> They're showing up in this month in my prog list. They're likely to show up next month as well. Uh, this is their fifth album. It was released September 1977, recorded at Rockfield Studios in Wales <clears throat> by Terry Brown for Anthem Records, the fifth studio album from the Canadian juggernaut known as Rush. A Farewell to Kings. Here's the reissue, the great reissue. Well, Rush has had some really good reissues of late, right? These deluxe packages with cool live stuff and uh, awesome. But anyway, uh, this is the original. Of course, that great cover photography there good stuff of course we know who's in the band right getty lee vocals all sorts of basses and synthesizers and alex lyson on all sorts of electric and acoustic guitars right neil peart on drums and all sorts of percussion and chimes and things like that and of course oh and uh, getty also plays uh bass pedals and whatnot so uh yeah this is just a classic classic album with not a lot of songs, right? Right, you got six tracks in total on here, some epic stuff on here. Of course, it kicks off with the amazing title track of Farewell to Kings. Um, man, love that acoustic intro by Alex. Then the big kind of uh, cavernous textured riffing that comes in. Uh, nice little proggy bits throughout that song. Just, it, I mean, there was no other band in this time period who was releasing music so heavy, but yet so kind of thinking man's music that's, you know, progressive, right? Pushing the boundaries of what you would normally consider uh, normal song structures and things like that. Sure, you know, you had Yes and Genesis and King Crimson coming before them, but taking that, because of course they were fans, right? Taking that and adding this kind of zeppelin and heaviness underneath, right? Uh, just nothing like Rush, then or now. Uh, Xanadu. I mean, what more can you say about Xanadu? It's one of the great Rush tracks of all time. It is, has been for me for 40 some odd years, uh, up there with my, some of my favorite songs from the band. There are times where I say Xanadu is my favorite song. There are times where it's my number two or number three. It's generally up there in the top three or five. Just such a great song, 11 minutes and change. You don't even notice that it's 11 minutes and change. So good. Uh, next up, Closer to the Heart, right? Just under three minutes long. This is basically their little kind of proggy pop song. It's got a great melody, the hook, people love it. It's a radio, classic rock radio staple. I've never been an enormous fan of Close to the Heart, to be honest with you. Uh, that's probably the one song on this and a lot of their classic albums that I just, you know, I generally skip. I, I'm not much of a fan. It's a nice song. I understand why everybody loves it, but it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, Cinderella Man, like that kind of moody like the layers of acoustic guitars in there but it's got great electric riffing too it's cinderella man really really good understated song really like that love the chorus too and then of course uh magical lovely right another little brief this this album is so good because it kind of mixes in the little brief little tracks with the bigger epics and speaking of bigger epics uh that comes up next in the form of cygnus x1 book one the voyage the great um you know, three or four part, if you count the prologue, right, uh, to this song. Just absolutely amazing. Again, it's heavy, it's complex, 
It's dynamic. It's moody. It's atmospheric. You know, you got Getty Lee's uh, high pitch wailing vocals all over that. Some incredible bass playing on this album. The drumming is off the charts. I mean, you, you can't say enough about these three guys and their musical abilities. That's the one thing when you listen to the Rush catalog, and especially like, you know, the formative years, the earlier years. Man, what these guys were doing musically. I mean, you know, you got three absolute drop dead virtuosos in this band. And, you know, every step of the way you're hearing, I, I, that, that's one great thing about these Rush albums. It's like, no matter how many times I've heard them throughout my life, every time I re-listen and I put in, like, a Farewell to Kings and I listen to a song like Cygnus X1 or, or whatever the song on this album, Xanadu, and you listen to it, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I don't know if I ever remember hearing that little chime there or, oh, that little guitar lick he just threw in there. Why did I never really notice that before? It's because there's so much depth and there's so much complexity to their music that it continues to give rewards to the listener year after year, decade after decade, right? So, again, I've heard this album tons of times since it first came out. But I still get jacked about listening to it because I still hear little little bits and things that like I didn't really pick up on before. And I always anticipate that I'm going to hear those additional things each and every time. That's that the, the gift that keeps on giving. That's the musical rush. It's like, you no matter how well you think you know some of these albums, there are times where you, all of a sudden you'll be surprised and be like, ah, oh, do you hear that? I don't quite remember that that way, right? It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to rediscover elements of music that you think you know so well that's much much later after you first started listening to them you all of a sudden fall upon something that just kind of makes you all happy and say that's why i listen to this kind of music because 40 years later i still can discover something new in that song or in that album by this artist and they continue to thrill and enrich my life all these years later that's pretty special that's what makes an album like this so special so again yeah, it's heavy. It's hard rocking. Could I, I? I really was torn. I had this whole conversation with George Lemay a week or so ago. I was really torn with, you know, where do I put Rush? Because I know I'm doing these two back to back shows. We did the 80s show. I'm doing the 70s prog this month. Next month, I'm doing the 70s hard rock and metal, right? These guys belong in both. Thankfully, though, they have other albums that maybe are a little less proggy and definitely more hard rock and proto metal or progressive metal. So we can see Rush in both lists, right? Because they they deserve to be in both lists because they're the the one band I think that transcends all of these genres we talk about so much here on the channel. They're hard rock, they're metal, they're progressive rock, they're progressive metal, right? They're pop at times, right? They're they're new wave at times, right? They're just they're just regular classic rock at times. That's the beauty of Rush. So so great. I know I'm going on the fun this whole other tangent about Rush right now, but they deserve it. They deserve it. And for those of you who are watching this who are like, ah, I don't get Rush. I don't understand why everybody talks about Rush so much. Well, you are missing out in my opinion, right? That's all I can say there. But if you don't like them, hey, we all hear things differently. I get it. Not everybody can love everything. But uh, I, Rush is like the one band where I hear the detractors and I kind of don't understand it. Because, uh, man, there's just so much to love about this music. But, hey, whatever, right? I don't make the rules. We each have our own rules in our head, and that's the way the world bounces, right? So, anyway, let us know what you think of A Farewell to Kings in the comments below. This is my pick number 15 and my countdown of favorite progressive rock albums of the 70s. Will you see Rush again on this list? I think you can bet on it. Anyway, uh, let us know what your pick for today, day 15, pick number 15 is as well. And visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, we got the links below to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So thanks in advance for your help there as always and stay tuned in just a little bit speaking of canada my favorite canadian mr martin popoff is uh coming on to the show joining me here in the funhouse in just a little bit so stay tuned for that we've got also coming up uh tomorrow we've got uh, the uk connection we've also got uh ranking the albums happening on sunday so lots going on here as always so please tune in imp pardo 
See you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Also, don't forget, uh, 3 o'clock today, we've got uh, Ken Golden's coming in the house as well. Uh, we're going to do our regular Friday programming, Friday afternoon, new release day, right? So we, there's where we talk about all the new albums that uh, are coming out in the worlds of Prague and Fusion and a little bits of progressive metal and things. And then Ken is going to tell you what he's got in stock, what's coming in stock over at the Laser's Edge. So uh, it's just a way to keep you guys aware of what's being released because I know it's hard, to, it's hard for me to keep up with all this stuff. So uh, thankfully, Ken has uh, offered to uh, help you out there and uh, all of us as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.